notice of any order. Disclosure, pecuniary interest, and the general nature thereof. Let's see any. Approval or amendments of meeting agenda. Be it resolved that council approve the agenda of the committee of the whole meeting, dated July the 5th, 2022, as presented. A mover and a seconder, please. Matt and uh, Doug, any discussion, any amendments? All in favor? Terry. Approval of minutes. Be it resolved that council approve the following minutes as presented. Regular meeting of council, June 21st, 2022. A mover and a seconder, please. Joe and Pat, any discussions, any corrections? All in favor? Thank you, Terry. Any no business arising from the minutes? Inquiries, members of the general public? See any? No delegations and presentations. Item eight, business arising from the delegations and presentations, there is none. We'll move to item nine, staff and committee reports. 9.1, public works, June report. Um, so I'll go over some of the major projects we've been working on uh, and some of the major items. Uh, under water plant distribution, uh, back on June 20th, uh, Victor Lebeau from Ottawa contacted me and informed me that they are having an issue with UV1 and that it is down. Uh, their instrumentation tech uh, had some troubleshooting on the, over the phone with Trojan. Um, they were unable to repair the issue. So Victor asked me to contact Trojan, to have a, one of their operators on site. Um, so right now I'm working with Trojan to get um, a service uh, scheduled. Um, right now I'm not sure when that's going to happen. UV2 is operational, but it's still not operational, so it's um, pretty urgent, it's getting urgent. Um, under capital projects, uh, Demora has completed the work on the prospect to have paving and sidewalk replacement. Um, they poured the sidewalk in two sections as to allow the resident at the Crystal Vault access because it's the, the front is the only access for them. They paved the area where we dug with a 50 millimeter lift. Then they milled uh, the whole stretch from uh, almost where the fire hydrant is on the corner. They milled that with another 40 millimeter lift on top. Uh, we provided the curb stop in the sidewalk to uh, level it with the new concrete. Um, I've contacted Demora and given the go ahead to pave the areas that were approved in the budget. Um, at this time, I'm still waiting for them to schedule us in. Um, I've contacted EXP to provide some engineering on the uh, Ruby Street sewer replacement project. And I have cur I'm currently reaching out to contractors uh, to quote on the uh, preservation of heritage sites project. I've had one quote come back so far, um, not having a lot of luck, uh, not getting much interest in uh, from contractors uh, right now, so I'll keep trying. Um, under Public Works, uh, Demora has also completed the work on Grandview Ave paving and sidewalk replacement, uh, the water break we had in spring. A new curb was installed first, followed by a 50 millimeter patch uh, where the water line was replaced. The sidewalk was poured on June 16th, and uh, Public Works returned. We did the landscaping and planted new grass for the resident. Um, one, two, uh, um, under buildings, uh, Brian Mercy is going to take over my former role, checking the um, extinguishers and all the safety equipment in each municipal building. Um, on June 20th, True Steel Security um, installed new cameras at the Fraser. They'll, there's two on the south side of the building that monitor both emergency exits and a camera on the inside to monitor the entrance to the common area and the elevator area. And they've also updated the FOB system. The previous version was obsolete and we couldn't update it anymore. Um, the, so upcoming, we had, we had hydrant flushing scheduled actually to start today, but with the water plant, uh, with the UV one being down, we decided to hold off on that just in case. So uh, that'll start as soon as we get that fixed. And uh, our shop construction timeline, uh, on June 16th, Lickup Electric arrived and began installing um, all the electrical components. They're, they've completed their portion, except for the hydro hookup itself to the pole. Um, we were <laughs> getting a locate right now. It's taking a little longer than normal. So we did get to locate. 
we did dig the trench. Now we're just waiting for hydro to come back to do the hookup. Um, we removed the old fence in front of the new shop. And I've contacted Peterson and asked if they had an estimate on when they'll be here to install the water line. Um, he has to coordinate with the gas company because they're crossing a major uh, a gas main. So they have to be on site for the operation. So um, he gave me uh, an idea. He's hoping uh, it'll be done by the end of July, somewhere in the next few weeks. And Menards has installed the windows on the garage door. So uh, that's where we stand right now with the garage. And any other questions on anything else? Anybody? <coughs> Go ahead, Joe. Yeah. Go back to um, uh, your UV lighting. You got a backup plan since we just have one? Yeah. So there's two UVs. Um, basically for redundancy purposes. So right now we're running off UV2, um, so it's running. You have no backup plan in case that one goes down? The backup, so yeah, the two UVs, that's, that's your redundancy. So yeah, so that's why it's urgent to get it back online. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. my next question I got for you is under buildings. There's one line in your report I'm not too keen on. What's that? It says, I will provide training to him when time permits. Yeah. There should be no time permits. There. It's been completed. It, okay. the, it's, we have the month to, to to inspect the buildings. So when I had time, you know what I mean? No, it's just the training part. Exactly. It's just basically it's it's showing them where all the extinguishers are and all the safety equipment. So it's done? It's done. Thanks. And July's checks have done. He actually did them today. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions of the uh, public works open? Well, you're doing a great job as far as I'm concerned. I can see grass being cut where it hasn't been cut in some time. and. Uh, I think that's bonus our little town that makes it look much, much better. And oh, also I should mention, sorry, I forgot. Um, our students started yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, they did training with Coleman Township students a day with uh, Jeremy Gary there. So today we had them start some work out about, obviously they weren't cutting grass for the rain, but uh, tomorrow we'll hope to get them on grass. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've got a bunch of railings to paint too, right? Yes, that is on our, um, our upcoming, our focus is going to be grass, brush, Getting our roadways painted Good and railings. So it would be nice to kick a little bit of them around, get yeah. some of that done. No other questions, no comments, no concerns? Okay. Very good. Thanks a lot. The uh, next item, 9.2, is bylaw enforcement report for June. Has everybody had the opportunity to read it? Uh, of yeah. course, Mr. Gill was not here, so if you have any questions, we can forward them to him. Go ahead, uh, Councillor. Uh, I just want to know how much longer is it going to go on for the public school? That is a nightmare, man. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't, know, I don't know what else you think we can do, but to have, I mean, Pete's on him steady. If he refuses to go, what do we chain him up and, and bring drag him here? Do we not he lay fines on him? Something? Well, he doesn't pay his fines. What, what are we going to do? We don't know. Okay. We can try finding him. Now, there's something else to have noticed in that place is there's a for sale sign in the window that's removable. That's what people are getting in and out. That's been taken care of. That's taken care of? Yeah, that's in the report here. I know I understand your frustration, but if he's just not cooperating with us, there's not a whole lot we can do. We try and try and try, and uh, other than drag him here by the hair, we nothing have nothing we can do here. Hey, there's nothing like legally we can do no. here. We can try everything you want, but why why throw good money after bad? Go ahead, Matt. Do your worship up. As with any other property standards concern, if we at least get an estimate and what that cleanup would be and, and start to put his feet to the fire and say, listen, you can go in and do it or we can do it for you and attach that to your taxes, because we did pass that that bylaw in order to do so. We can do it. We can do whatever you 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 people request us to do. We'll uh, you can do whatever you require, and if uh, if we do have to start bidding it ourselves, it's going to be costly. Uh, we put it on his taxes. We're taking a big, big chance of not getting payback on it. So it's a public safety concern that I'm worried about right now. I am also, but and it's there at yeah. this point. So okay, so we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. We are public safety we are. is we are is paramount. So if we could do that, or at least get an idea as to what that would cost to clean up, and then send him a notice with that, that would be. Yeah, definitely get Pete to investigate that and go, we can go from there. It's also frustrating for Pete too because he's chasing them down all the time and you put the fence up, you put the gate up, it comes down, you barricade the windows, they, they kick them out. But we're working at it, trust me, it's not being ignored. Nope. Okay, anything else? Okay. 
And for that part. Okay, municipal intern. Oh. Sir, can I just, uh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. sorry, one second. Uh, going on reports, the uh, animal control reports not here. If you've read Steve, you'll see no animal report has not been turned in. I just got a question if we could get an answer on this. Is, is she supposed to give us a report once a month or is it quarterly? That's all I need to know because if we're paying for a service, I'd like to get full, full service rendered. Yeah, she's supposed to be here to give us a monthly report, I believe, is what her contract states. Yeah, we send it on school. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Very good. Go ahead, Evan. You got the floor. Sure there we go. Good enough. <laughs> so uh, just another update on the, the tech park. Um, so we made a lot of progress this month, which uh, we're pretty, pretty happy about. Um, so the, the first item on the agenda is um, what I guess is formerly the tennis courts. Now we're, we're going to update it um, to a traffic park. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen one of these, but essentially, um, you know, there's kind of lines painted on the road. There's going to be no signs on the stuff and it's, it's for kids. Um, the idea is for them to kind of learn the rules of the road uh, on, you know, bikes or scooters or whatever they're riding. Um, you know, it allows them to do so without being on a main street. You know, typically, um, it, you know, it's going to be designed for younger children. You probably don't want them out uh, on the main roads. Uh, so right now we're just kind of waiting on quotes. Um, we're talking to a few different, you know, paving companies in the area, waiting on, uh, you know, quotes for the resurfacing, uh, getting quotes on the line painting. Uh, and then I don't know if any of you have seen, but we've taken down uh, three fences uh, that were previously there. Just the lakeside fences remained up. Um, but it's it's open now. Uh, and then the basketball nets uh, are also just going to remain up. Uh, and then we're just adding new new chain nets for now. Uh, for the ball field, uh, the infield has been graded now. Um, you know, it was getting pretty grassy, so we added some sand, graded it out. Um, and we'll continue this throughout the summer. Hopefully that's a job. Um, you know, maybe not the – we'll see. I don't know if the students can do grading, but uh, – you know, hopefully they can kind of go down there, keep the, the infield, the grass around the baseball field uh, maintained. And then we've also added permanent bases to the infield for people to use. Um, for mini putt, uh, it's been unlocked. It's just open for public use at this point. Um, we're just leaving it as kind of a, a bring your own ball, bring your own putter situation, um, because while we do have a few putters and balls to offer, unfortunately, um, you know, they'll just get stolen if we leave them out. So, so those, the items that we have right now are just for, um, they're for larger groups. Um, when larger groups come, such as schools, we had some come uh, at the end of the school year here. Uh, we'll give them a key. They can come in, they can use, uh, you know, the supplies that we have and then lock it back up and then, uh, and then just uh, go on their way. Uh, and then one thing that we're looking to add, um, still kind of waiting to, to hear on, on who's the best person to do this. Um, we're going to be adding uh, bumpers along the side of all the, the mini pot holes. So a few have already been done. I don't know if you've seen, but uh, there's just kind of bricks along the side. We're hoping to just add those around the rest um, just so that, you know, when balls are flying all over the place, hopefully they stay within, you know, the parameters of the hole now. Uh, and then looking into replacing and updating some of the worn items on the course. Uh, a lot of the things that are down at the mini putt, unfortunately, you know, have been left out during the winter. The elements have gotten to them, so they're getting a little bit old. So uh, we're going to be looking into uh, updating some of that as well. Uh, for the soccer nets, frames have been, you know, placed. There's new netting on them. Uh, people can use those. Uh, LED lighting. Uh, so we have uh, 30 posts and lights that are going to be put up uh, around the park. And so, um, again, this kind of falls into the same. We're just kind of waiting on a, on a, a quote from some of the, the paving companies around the community um, on, you know, who's, uh, what's the best price to, to get that done for us. Uh, for the outdoor exercise equipment, an order has gone in uh, with a company called Active Fit. Uh, for the community park package, uh, it's going to arrive in about four to six weeks, and then we still have to install it, which will take uh, another, you know, couple weeks. Uh, this package comes with six units, uh, which have both static static equipment and machines. Uh, provides a variety of low, medium, and high intensity exercise, 
And then this equipment is suitable for a multitude of users with a variety of different goals and abilities. Um, so yeah, you know, certain things like we just have like pull-up bars, which, you know, is just more static. And then you have other things kind of like a, I don't know what the official term is for, but it's like a biking machine. You know, you can just kind of sit on a chair and you, you can, you can cycle on it. Um, and so then again, waiting on a quote for a 28 by 24 cement pad uh, to place this equipment on. Uh, a natural playground. So this is uh, something that's going to go uh, adjacent to where the current playground area is. Um, and uh, so this is going to be a natural playground from Rosie's Gardens. It's going to include things like log climbers, a balance beam, uh, small climbing rocks, and a few other things. Um, so according to them, nature-based playgrounds, uh, uh, they mimic the natural world and can be comforting to children of all ages and abilities. So uh, it's a little bit different than what we have now. Right now we have kind of industrialized equipment. So this is going to be something extra, uh, something new, uh, a little bit different than what we have currently. Uh, for users' comfort, bleachers have been uh, moved around the park, a um, couple on each side of the soccer field, and then some behind uh, the ball diamond. Oh, we have some bike racks that are uh, hidden in some weeds right now, so we'll have to trim those weeds, take the bike racks out, and we're going to move those bike racks uh, to a more accessible area. Um, and then uh, we're getting some quotes uh, for some permanent sunshades to add. Right now we have those, those tents, but we're looking for something um, that can kind of stay up year round. The, the shade itself would be taken down, but it's kind of these big metal posts that would be able to stay up um, all year round. And then uh, waiting on quotes again for paving for, for a walking path. And then signage, you know, anybody who um, provides anything, if, if, you know, they would like a sign up, um, that's something we'll be looking into. And, uh, you know, kind of, you know, safety and, and other things like that signage so uh so yeah that's that's the update uh any questions anybody has uh feel free to feel free to ask no questions okay uh we've had uh, thanks a lot evan it's uh, it started that's it. great down there and the staff is very well involved with you helping yeah out. yeah no it's it's uh it's picking up for sure this month yes. this month was uh good and i mean uh once we start hearing back from some of those those uh you know, companies for the cement yeah. stuff and the paving, mm -hmm. like things will really, really come together really fast. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and the park is gaining momentum. There, there's more and more users. Yeah, yeah, online. for sure. I've, uh, we've already seen uh, quite a few kids down there this yeah. summer, which I mean, uh, you know, it's good to see. Yeah. So. Uh, unfortunately, we have experienced a little bit of vandalism. Uh, hopefully, our cameras will uh, yeah. detect it a little closer next time, and we'll be able to uh, identify who, who the culprits are, and we'll go from there. Uh, I encourage anybody who uh, wants to go have taken a trip down there, take a look and see what's going on. It's it's very, very uh, interesting. It's very uh, uplifting to see something being done finally in the park. <laughs> okay. That's about all I have on that. Okay. Any other questions? Good. Okay. Be resolved that council accept the staff and committee reports as presented. The mover and a seconder, please. Matthew and Pat. Discussion's already been had. All in favor? Thank you. Okay, item 10. Items for council direction. 10.1, bylaw 2022-16, amendment for user speed bylaw number 2020-50 to reflect administrative costs associated with tax registration files. Steve, can you uh, give us a little bit of a update on that? Yes, Your Worship. This here is an amendment to the bylaw of uh, 2020-50 is to incorporate the administrator costs uh, with tax registration files. So this would be cost for your first warning letter, second warning letter, file preparation, uh, registered letters, as well for the process, file action, tender, opening and examination, and payment to court. So this will incorporate, like I said, all administration costs. Okay. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I need a little direction from you. Uh, I, I just trying to get around the thought that this is showing uh, administration rates for 2021, 2022, 2023, uh, but it's an amendment to it. Uh, were any of these in the original bylaw? I would have to just double check on that, but with the uh, none of the costs, as far as I'm aware, was on the tax registration files before. So I'm just wondering, like in my world, when we pass a bylaw, it becomes effective 
once we passed it. And I can't see how we could make this retroactive to 2021 uh, or the first part of 2022. That kind of <laughs> doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I'll look into it then. Yes, I'd appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. The other thing was, of course, uh, I think we were proposing if you read a first, second, and third time and finally adopt it, could we make that a first and second time and then have the third time at yep. the next following council meeting? Most definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, anything like this is a, it's not a problem doing it. Yeah, I, I'm just confused. Yeah. I haven't seen anything quite like that yeah. before. So I, yeah. I read it, but I never really paid much attention to it. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Comments? Hey, Steve, we'll look into that first and get back to us on that. And that will be the next week because you're still on vacation. Okay, 10.2 discussion of fence regulations. <clears throat> Well, you've got a, oh, sorry, you've got a little bit of a, a background on the, on the fence uh, thing. Yes, Your Worship. Uh, what staff is looking for is a direction that council may want to go with uh, fence regulation. Either create a full bylaw to protect the owners of privately owned outdoor swimming pools to erect and maintain the fences or an amendment to the property standards bylaw 2009-003 to include registrations on fencing around pools. Okay, and the option, the, the other option, the other consideration is, go ahead, Joe, do that question. I'd like to make the amendment to an existing bylaw mm -hmm. and going into a full Fence bylaw, we could get into quite a bit of hot water with the, the property lines and what we have around here. Yeah. So, well, to make an amendment to basically follow the provincial standards, is it not? For the fence bylaw? For, uh, there is, for, pools, for, for pools, pools, there is no uh, provincial bylaw or mm -hmm. provincial law on that. It goes within the municipalities. Oh, okay. So, if we make one just to include that. pools, just for oh. the, the safety of kids, really. Mm -hmm. Yep. Any other? Yeah, because if we with, do, hey, right, go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, making an amendment within our existing bylaws is the easiest way to go. You don't need to yes. start all over again. It's just a small addition in there. Okay. That's but it's definitely desire. needed. Yeah, that's council's desire. We'll come back with it the next meeting and go from there. Okay, nothing else on that one? Okay, uh, discussion to adopt resolution supporting the Nestimane District Community Safety and Wellbeing Plan for funding allocations. Well, if I'm not mistaken, this was mandated by the province. Every community has to have a, a well-being, a safety and well-being plan. Yes, Your Worship, it was mandated under the province's uh, Police Services Act, municipality to develop and adopt a community safety and well-being plan. Um, municipalities had the option to plan individually or, uh, or to develop a joint plan in partnership with neighboring uh, municipalities. So in February 18, 2020, Council passed resolution number 2020-33, expressing interest in DSAB to take the lead role in administrating and developing a district-wide plan mm -hmm. with the other 24 municipalities. Mm -hmm. So all municipalities Enter the district plan and an oversight of committee made up of representatives from DSAB, Muskegon Health Unit, Muskegon Shores, and Kirkland Lake was struck. So a presentation was made on May 26, 2022 to review and to review the draft plan and provide feedback in which included now the next steps. So we have to adopt uh, adoption of the plan by each municipality by resolution. Published plan within 30 days of adoption. And that's on the website. Printed copy available to anyone who requests it. Approve in principle a contribution for plan resource based on appropriate net by DSAP and Cobalt is at 2.9%. Uh, plan lead will be selected to act as point of contact for the plan and develop of working groups. And DSAP is the lead until then and support the implementation of this plan. And therefore, I included the plan into uh, 
the uh, agendas. Okay. Are there any questions? Of go ahead. Uh, uh. So much of this that I read sounds almost identical to what DSAP is supposed to be doing, <laughs> and the health unit, and the various other groups that we've got. Is this just going to make another group on top that's costing us? Like this year, it's, it doesn't seem to. I'm, I'm not seeing anything new in here that isn't supposed to be covered by the, all those other groups that we're each municipality is funding. So. Go ahead, Matt. To your worship, to clear or to answer Councillor Anderson's question, it's a plan in place, and and you're. Your social services boards and your health units are actually partners within the plan as is each individual municipality. It's framework that we work within and the, the entities that you're speaking to all have roles to play within it. And our role would be to either adopt or reject the plan and then make support or deny support for a set plan. Um, and, and it is something that needs to be implemented under the Police Services Act. So it's, it's a plan and not necessarily um, an entity. Maybe and costs us a plan, a plan costs us too. Well, the fees associated go into the administrative costs to facilitate a plan, and that is our portion. And it's each individual mm -hmm. municipality that pays yeah. into it. And our, our rate is 2.9%. And it's actually within the, the table that's been oh, yes, yeah, I've read all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if we had to have put this together mm -hmm. ourselves, it would have cost us a lot more than us mm -hmm. than what these ever are charging us because there are other small municipalities that would have had a hard time, the same as we would have had to, to implement this, to, to get this done to start off with and then to implement it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a saving for having done it jointly with other municipalities. District wide provides mm -hmm. significant savings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? Does that answer all your questions, Pat? Or? No, I see that. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. It's just, I think we went through this with oh, another group, and I can't remember the the letters that go with it. You know, a few years ago, and they were supposed to sort of be an umbrella over all these things. Mm -hmm. And now we got another umbrella. How many more umbrellas are we going to get? I just get frustrated with the number of extra things that we really don't see any uh, payback. Don't yeah. see any oh, help coming back to our town, and that's that's where it gets me that we're constantly fighting and fighting for benefits for our town and well, and paying and not getting any. If we inform people that it's there and they don't use it, there's not much we can do about it. But if we inform people and they do use it, then it's a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. Doug. Well, I, I just like to suggest that a you know we, we've been told to do it, mm -hmm. yeah. so we're doing it. Yeah. Uh, B, I don't think umbrella organizations are a bad thing. I, I think to Pat's point, the question of getting things implemented and contributing to the goals that we want to see established is probably more important. And on that basis, I was a little bit disappointed to see that it's fairly thinly funded and fairly thinly manned. And I'm not too sure how effective it's going to be, but uh, I, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a great plan. Uh, I'm going to wish it well, and I hope as it flourishes, uh, maybe we can see it become more effective and expand a little bit. It's a learning curve for everyone involved, so. Yes. Okay, well, thank you very much. 10.4, uh, discussion on food bank requests for renting former doctor's office. Uh, we've got a letter here from uh, Mrs. Mercier, who is the manager of the food bank, and they would like to take the whole, uh, the whole building over. You spoken to uh, Emily? Uh, yes, Your Worship. What they're requesting is to have the front area as an office area mm -hmm. for them, and they would pay rent for that, a reasonable rate. Um, only issue at this time is to get work done in that uh, area. Yeah. As uh, Aaron pointed out earlier, trying to get a contractor in for any work right now Yes, very difficult mm -hmm. and very costly as what we would have been compared to just even a year ago for building supplies and his rates have gone up over 20 percent if not more what stage is that at right now what does it need to be done it, um, next door it needs to be in yeah. and okay. complete overhaul including electrical plumbing 
false ceiling. A false ceiling will have to be done from one end to the other. Uh, ventilation. Ventilation. Loss. Heating. Basically a whole new building. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be a costly project. Yeah. And rent probably wouldn't uh, take a long time to cancel that price out. Yeah. I okay. Think so. Okay, just to keep everybody abreast of what's going on there anyways. And uh, the contractors right now are at a demand. It's unbelievable. Okay, the items for council information. Be it resolved that council accept the items for council direction and information as presented. A mover and seconder, please. Matthew and Pat. All in favor? Very good. Other business. Got a letter of gratitude from ESCSM, uh, the bursary for account. Academic Awards to Alexei Cleave. As she was the recipient of the $100 award. I attended the, uh, on, the on the note, I attended the uh, graduation at St. Pat's and I forgot the name of the young lady who won, which is a, co a cobalt girl. I'll have it for the next meeting. Sorry about that, my mistake. Uh, item 11.2, Art Colony Visiting Cobalt. Pat, you want to give us a little bit more on that since you were a uh, you really you uh, knew more about that than we did. So, well, the art Caroline, I have no idea how many years they they've been visiting here every July. Many, many, many. Many, many, many. Certainly before I ever they were doing it. Certainly before I ever came back in the came here in the eighties. They're here for a week. Um, they're painting in cobalt uh, for the whole week, so you'll see them out around the town. Uh, they're based out of the Golden Age Club for that for that week, and artistically, it, it continues to put cobalt on the map every year. Uh, some of them are northern painters, some of them are you know relatively local, and others come from a long way to to attend this. So it's just a, I just wanted to alert everyone what the dates were, so that if you see them out and around in the street, or if you've got the opportunity. Say at a lunchtime or first thing in the morning or later in the day to stop down the golden age and just welcome them to our community. Yeah. And I can uh, I can vouch for the uh, Councilor Anderson. They do love it when people drop in to see them. Oh yes. And they don't have a problem with you looking over their shoulder as to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So a little bonus for our municipality. That's right. Okay. And I'm going to take this time. I want to thank Councilor Anderson for the fantastic job she did on Canada Day. Along with the assistance of Mr. Joey Osterberg and, and Andy so on, and her son uh, for the parade I'm talking about, mm -hmm. and uh, the Golden Age Club. I want to congratulate them for their work also, and the fire department and the works for uh, participating in the, in the festivities. And the sponsors well that, that we got for the uh, the water and the freezies and things like that. Yeah. Too. yeah. Oh. Okay. I don't know who they are, but. Uh, Thank you again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very well. It was very nicely done. Now we're mm -hmm. one of the only municipalities that still put on parades, I guess. And it was super. What I liked when I, I, you know, we didn't have very many kids going in the parade. And, oh, you know, like coming out of COVID. But when we we're going along the street and it was taking a look, all the kids are tiny. We have so many newborns, toddlers. Mm -hmm. Uh, preschoolers in the area. So this parade's going to grow back again as those kids grow tall enough to be able to go in the parade themselves. So I'm really looking, because the street was full of kids watching it. So it can grow back again. Mm -hmm. It will. Mm -hmm. It will. Okay. Item 12, outstanding business. Uh, we have a list of outstanding businesses. Is there anything anybody would like to ask questions about on that one? No. Okay. No closed session. Obviously, no business arising from the closed session. Adjournment. Be it resolved that the committee to hold meeting of council be adjourned at 7.04 p.m. Moved by Doug. Second by Everyone. Gary. Gary's going to be. Yeah, I was going to get out. All in favor. Thank you very much, folks, for coming out. Thank you for coming out, guys.